Hi, my name is Dr. Jamie Adam and I teach pharmacology and I'm going to talk to you today about a couple of very important GI medications. So we're going to talk about H2 blockers and proton pump inhibitors. So I'm using this lovely concept map that a student uh, sent me and you can see it's about GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease. And in this condition, it's very typical for the patient to receive typically either an H2 blocker or a proton pump inhibitor. So in this concept map, the student is kind of doing a little compare and contrast of these two drug classes. So let's talk about H2 blockers first. So H2 blockers are histamine 2 receptor antagonists, so otherwise known as H2 blockers. Um, that's another way of saying it. So examples would be drugs that end in tadine, so famotidine, ranitidine. Um, those are some examples. Cymetidine is another example of an H2 blocker. And these help block gastric acid secretion. Um, and they do that uh, by blocking particular cells in the stomach. So this can really help with the symptoms of reflux. And so that's a very common reason why a patient might be receiving an H2 blocker. Um, it's a very popular drug class. It's been around a long time. It's over the counter um, and patients can, can take it uh, can get it themselves. We do have IV versions of H2 blockers, and so you might see it also used in the hospital setting. And just a very important drug class. Been around a long time, pretty inexpensive, very easy for patients to get themselves. And it's a drug class that, that can be used every day, lifelong, and is pretty well tolerated. So very few adverse effects. Really the big difference or the 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 H2 blocker that carries with it the most concern is cimetidine. So you can see on the map, the student um, put here tolerated well except cimetidine. So she did a good job of kind of highlighting that on her map so that she wouldn't forget about that as she was studying, which is good. Um, the difference with cimetidine tagament is the other, is the, the trade name for it, is that when we give that drug IV, we can have an increased risk of hypotension and more severe effects for the elderly. So that is something that we watch for. Um, otherwise, pretty well tolerated drug class. Now, PPIs, let's talk a little bit about them. So PPIs are uh, proton pump inhibitors. So they also impact uh, gastric acid production and they do it a little bit differently. So um, they, uh, and really they're a very aggressive way of decreasing gastric acid. So they are a newer drug class. They came about long after the H2 blockers. They are now over the counter as well and they end in azol, so omaprazole. They're, they're kind of the, the, the prazoles, and again, the, the student did a good job of highlighting that here with the drug endings. So this is, a, this is a drug class that's also commonly used in addition to being used, um, in addition to being used for GERD, it can also be used to treat ulcers. So uh, proton pump inhibitors have been found to to speed the rate of healing for someone who has an ulcer. Because they so aggressively block gastric acid production, that allows the stomach tissue time to heal. So you can imagine for someone with a, with a stomach ulcer that that would be very helpful. So um, the other thing about these is that these really have to be limited in the amount of time the patient takes it. So it's really meant to be used between four and eight weeks at the most. So, you know, there are, I've encountered some patients that take uh, the PPIs like omaprazole, Prilosec, things like that. Nexium, I guess, is another example. I have seen patients take them longer, but when they were originally tested, they were tested to be used for short-term treatment only. So there has been some additional studies to show that if you take a PPI long-term, it can have more serious adverse effects. So osteoporosis is one of them. There's also some increased risk of cancer depending on um, the, the PPI. So that is something to, to note, especially when it comes to patient teaching, that it's really meant to be used short-term. 
Now, cost-wise, these are more expensive. They haven't been on, they haven't been over the counter as long. They're a little more expensive, a little bit pricier, um, but they are more aggressive. So even for your patients that have reflux disease, a lot of times they'll say, gosh, you know, um, I, I wasn't really getting better when I was taking famotidine or Pepsid, but when I started taking Nexium or, or Omeprazole, I, I started I started being feeling better and having less symptoms. So a lot of patients prefer the PPIs. They just have to be um, restricted as far as how long they take them. So I hope this summary was helpful to you. Hopefully it'll help you keep them straight, which one is which, and a um, little bit of compare and contrast there. Now, maybe you're thinking, oh my goodness, okay, I'm a little overwhelmed by nursing school. How am I gonna remember everything? Um, and concept mapping is great, but like, how do you even do that? Well, I created a free ebook that the link is below. Download that. It's going to walk you through exactly how you need to study for your next test. It's going to show you how to concept map and um, how to know that you're ready so that you have less stress. You're, you're less freaked out about that next test and you feel good going into it. Um, I want nursing school to be something that feels very manageable to you. And, um, and so I have, I've created something that I think will be very helpful. So um, please like and subscribe and share this video and stay tuned for the next um, pharmacology and nursing videos coming up.